My name is Aisha Hussein Roba from Garbatuila, Isiolo County. I am a mother of two. I advocate for the rights of young women and girls in Isiolo County. The reason why I joined the NFGM campaign is when I gave birth to my first kid, I got a lot of complications, had to undergo cesarean delivery, and I can attest that it was really horrifying and it affected me even emotionally. Most of the explanations that I got from different doctors were once you undergo FGM, your body is never the same. So um, the explanations that I got were it might be due to the cut. I was cut when I was seven years old, along with one of my cousins and friends. I used to feel like it was something normal, it was part of my culture, but that changed after I learned that really FGM has a lot of negative effects on women and girls. And so that's when I started talking about FGM. I formed a WhatsApp group, joined a few of my friends and some young women and girls. And I realized that women are going through a lot um, behind closed doors, just that they don't have a platform to raise these issues. After I came out and giving, uh, started giving uh, my story, other young women and girls are now coming up and talking about FGM as an issue that is something that needs to be addressed. My name is Rosalind Golo. I am a, a medic by profession, survivor of FGM, and at the same time activist. The fact that I have been cut twice, that is the one which was I was six years old, and then repeated at the age of 12 years old. It's my aunt who has felt that there is a need for me to be circumcised the second time. It was the, that type of FGM, and that is infibulation. They tie me with the rope, they put my legs apart as usual because that is the procedure to, they do to all the children, girls. They started removing all the part of genitalia, including the labia majora, labia minora, and even they saw it with the dawn. And I went through the pain of bleeding shock, trauma, and a lot of infection. And I stayed in hospital for, for a while. I was unable to urinate, and there was a lot of pus in my abdomen. The infibulation happened to take place for the pus and the urine to come through. And I was put on antibiotic. At the same time, I stayed in the hospital until I was discharged in a month. I grew up knowing that Siwes Pata Buana na Siwes is a umtoto because already the doctor Alisema we may destroy completely. Our firstborn is also a father of four girls like me. They have all gone to universities, they are finished now, they are working, but they have not been circumcised. So having seen this, for me it wasn't a shock to come out to say it because I already have a platform where I can work from. It takes great courage to speak out against female genital mutilation in cultures deeply embedded in tradition and social norms. Despite this, survivors of FGM such as 27-year-old Aisha Hussein Roba and Rosalina Golo are pushing for an end to the practice daily. There are few girls who are lucky, like my age, who have not been cut. And there's a lot of stigma. You know, people view them as unclean are not um, complete to be, you know, to be part of our community. The community is still deep rooted in the culture, like they are still holding on to the culture. We are usually told, uh, you want to adopt the Western culture, don't like come and tell us that our culture is bad. So sometimes it's hard, but we have religious um, um, elders who have now started accepting that, you know, FGM is just a culture that we need to get rid of. And also, we have the Gumigayo Declaration. The Borana elders back um, in Ethiopia, Moyale, declared that FGM is no longer part of our culture. They shunned it. So this is a very big step towards eradicating FGM and also addressing to the people uh, in terms of the cultural aspect of FGM. I have been using a sanitary pad as a platform 
of penetrating to the community. According to the 2014 Kenya Demographic and Health Survey, 21% of women and girls aged between 15 and 49 have undergone the cut in the country. However, in some communities, the practice is four times the national prevalence. Among the Somali, the prevalence stands at 94%, meaning nearly all girls and women have had their genitalia cut. <laughs> FGM was banned in Kenya in 2001 and anti-FGM statute was passed in 2011. However, the laws have not been effective in stopping the outdated practice. This kind of meetings, informal visits and door-to-door -door campaigns have aided in disseminating information about the effects of the cut. The strategy is me as a survivor to come out. All the survivors should be given the, the platform because they are the one who went through the cut. To say they are those painful stories, but then at the same time to be motivated and being supported. You can't miss one or two people who can challenge you, tell you, hey, how can you even talk about yourself? Don't you feel even ashamed? Yes, it is there. But shame is when you have not passed through that because Mimi, I, felt, I feel pain. I feel that nobody should pass what I have passed through. Isolo County is one of Kenya's 22 FGM hotspots with statistics indicating that nearly two-thirds or 65% of girls aged 15 and 19 have undergone the practice compared to the national average of 21%. The Youth Anti-FGM Network has opened a new chapter in Isolo County to raise the voices of young people in the fight to abolish female genital mutilation in Kenya. The initiative, led by Aisha, intends to eradicate FGM within a generation. We want to embrace the voices of the young people. We want the young people to, to take up this initiative because they are the generation that is coming up. If they say we won't cut our daughters, then FGM will end. Because I'm looking forward to a generation where we will have zero FGM without much effort. I've given out my ebook through the internet. It has been used by the UNFPA. It has been used by the national peacemakers in the, the Kodia and the Sweden embassy. So I've been giving out this testimony in order for others, survivors, to come out. Given the significant population growth among the youth and their impact on society, Involving the youth in the battle against FGM is a must. Young people are also using social media platforms to spread the word about ending the cut. They are the, our soldiers who are going to, to penetrate into every hamlet, every village, every family in the Nyumbakumi. Waelezana ya kwamba, serikali imekata hii kulingana na the UN Convention, kulingana na katiba yetu. We have what we call focal person in each and every other county. And we use um, social media as a key platform towards ending FGM. And within these particular um, counties, we are also using the university associations uh, towards bringing young people uh, together. Religious leaders, elders and other cultural gatekeepers hold the key to entire communities rejecting FGM. If it was uh, acceptable in Islam, it would have been practiced in the strong Islamic countries like Saudi Arabia, in the Middle East and Pakistan, where this thing is not practiced. So it has no basis in religion and we have reached this uh, resolution during our national conference of religious leaders and council of elders some years back. President Uhuru Kenyatta made the audacious and important pledge in 2019 to end FGM in Kenya by 2022. Are we just talking about FGM in boardrooms or in big hotels? holding conferences, how are the sensitization at the grassroots level? I believe if you go to the grassroots level where this um, act is happening, we can end FGM as soon as possible. Definitely it won't help, but the figures will reduce. Right now, countrywide it is 21%. It will go to 18, it will go to 7, and it will go to 0. And nothing can be done overnight. Although there has been significant progress in policy formulation and legislation, more has to be done at the community level to address age-old beliefs and traditions that harm children and limit their potential. <laughs> Rosongoi, NTV.